Hello everyone, I'm Singsol Lee, and in this talk, I will introduce our in-network memory management for the segregated data center called MIND. This work is done in collaboration with my colleagues at Yale, Yang Peng, Yu Peng, Anra, Lin, and Abhishek. Resource desegregation separate a monolithic server into each type of resources and connect them over network. It can provide many benefits, such as high resource utilization, modularity, and elastic scalability. Among other resources, we believe memory desegregation is important and interesting because of the following reasons. First, memory desegregation is attractive and also needed. Memories in today's data center suffer from low utilization, unbalanced usage, and high energy consumption. Second, memory desegregation is a timely problem. As network performance increases, resource desegregation becomes more feasible. For example, storage desegregation is already popular, and we believe memory desegregation is the next milestone. In memory desegregation, we want to achieve performance and transparent elasticity at the same time. Performance represents high throughput and low latency for data fetch over network, so the CPU can quickly get the data it wants to access. Transparent elasticity represents flexible resource allocation. Application running on disorganized system can use any compute and memory resources and where they are available. For example, as shown in the figure, thread and memory allocations can be placed any of the blades. Our goal in memory desegregation is create a system that can achieve both high performance and transparent elasticity at the same time. However, in previous studies, only one of the metric could be achieved. In distributed shared memory, the metadata for data allocation is partitioned and distributed over servers. So we need to look up the metadata first, then fetch the data from the current owner. DSM provides shared memory interface across server. So we use DSM design in memory disaggregation. It will provide good elasticity, but not high performance due to the additional network down trips. On the other hand, recent studies compromised elasticity for high throughput by disabling shared memory. So they can achieve high performance, but with poor elasticity across CPU blades. Our key insight to break the trade-off is the network memory management. First, the location of the network is same as the location of the MMU in the traditional architecture. The network is placed in the middle of disaggregated blades, so it has global view for any packets passing between blades. And also, its processing is done directly on the data pass. Second, the programmable switch provides flexibility and processing and line rate. Lastly, networking and memory management have the similar primitives. So we can reuse network hardware which has been optimized for decades. For example, IP forwarding is about translating IP address and sending the packet to the right destination so it's similar to address translation and forwarding requests to the correct memory blade. In mind, we focus on the following three functionalities of memory management. The first one is address translation, which is to find the location of the requested data. The second one is memory protection, which is to verify the access permission. And finally, cache currents protocol is keep the data synchronized across compute blades. Mind provides goal of virtual address between blades to facilitate transparent compute and memory elasticity. Although a programmable switch is much more flexible compared to the traditional network switches, it has only limited amount of memory and computing resources. For example, it has only tens of megabyte of memory on ASIC, which is obviously not sufficient to store metadata in a traditional way, such as page table in a four kilobyte granularity. Similarly, because a switching ASIC is not a general purpose processor, it's not feasible to directly port the complicated functionalities of traditional MMU, such as complicated cache coherence protocol. 
To achieve our goal under the constraint I just explained, we apply the following three principles. The first principle is decoupling. We use this principle to design suitable data structure and compute logic for memory management function. The second principle is leveraging global view of network. As the network is located in the middle of any communication path between plates, we leverage the global view to make more optimal decisions. The last principle is to exploit memory-centric hardware primitives. As I already mentioned, network hardware has been optimized for decades. So we leverage the network primitives to efficiently perform the memory management functionalities. Let me briefly describe challenges and solutions in mind. For a memory access, if the corresponding data is not cached in the local DRAM, the data need to be fetched over the network. If the data is owned by another compute plate and dirty, then the current owner first need to fetch the data. Otherwise, the data is fetched from the memory plate. In general, we apply the principle of decoupling to separate data structure and process logic of each memory management function. Let's look into the component one by one. Let's take a look at the address translation component first. In address translation, there is a trade-off between small and huge pages. If we use four kilobyte pages, they cannot be fitted into in-network memory. However, we cannot use huge pages because of poor load balance of memory allocation across memory blades. We solve this problem by applying the principle of decoupling and exploiting network hardware. In particular, we show in our paper that we can employ both coarse and fine-grained translation entries. In memory protection, we face a similar trade-off which is between in-network resource usage and flexibility. If we use four kilobyte pages, there will be too many protection entries, while huge pages prevent us from assigning flexibly sized permissions. We solve this problem by leveraging network hardware. Specifically, we use flexible VMA granularity permissions by leveraging hardware prefix matching to perform permission checks efficiently. In cache current directory, there is a trade-off inside of cache line. We cannot use small size of cache line because of the limited in-network memory space. On the other hand, large cache lines will cause for sharing problem. As a larger cache line is likely to be shared across more threads, even if each thread access different part of the cache line. To solve this problem, we first apply the principle of decoupling to separate access and current chronologies. We then dynamically resize the cache current directory entries based on the principle of global view. I'd like to highlight that the dynamic resizing scheme we developed can limit the number of directory entries under the theoretical bound. We show in our paper that the bound is given a slow scale in working set size compared to the linear in traditional static approaches. Finally, for the control plane component, we apply the principle of global view. For example, for a new memory allocation request, the control plane components leverage their global view for better load balance across memory blades. Please look at the paper for more details of its trade-off and solution. Let me explain our evaluation result. We tested mine with up to eight compute plate, and each of them has up to 10 threads. And we compared mine with two prior systems, GAM, which is a distributed shared memory, and FastSwap, which is one of the recent memory disaggregation proposals. We categorized the application into two classes, and the first class is presented in this slide. Mine can scale well for TensorFlow and YCSP workload C. This is because those workloads do not trigger heavy data invalidations or race condition between compute plates. On the other hand, mines cannot scale linearly for graph computation and YCSP workloads A. This is because those workloads have intensive data invalidation for cache coherence caused by frequent write access to the shared memory region. I'd like to mention that GAM can scale well because of its relaxed memory consistency model. 
this relaxed consistency is not possible in x86 architecture without exposing special API to application that will compromise transparency. Please check our paper for more detailed micro benchmarks to understand trade off between design decisions. Let me wrap up this talk by summarizing the following key points. In memory disaggregation, there is a trade off between resource elasticity and performance. To break the trade off, we design MIND and in network memory management by leveraging programmable network. By placing memory management in network, MIND could match the performance of prior proposals and provide transparent elasticity at the same time. Thank you for your attention.